Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. This is Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier, and I am happy to be here with you again today. Thank you for joining us on our long-form political commentary. And so there's something that's just come out tonight. Uh, you're going to be seeing this probably tomorrow, I'm sure. And it's going to have a major impact, very possibly on 2020 election, on what's going on in the nation right now in terms of Black Lives Matters, in terms of Antifa, just a lot of impacts all the way down the line. And it's, it's very interesting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but to do that, we need to take a trip. Please stay with me here. So let's go back in time a little bit to 2019. Matter of fact, it was July of 2019. As you can see in this article from the New York Times, Trump administration gets court victory in Sanctuary City's case. Now, for just to put it in context, in 2019, 2018, President Trump was fed up with a lot of the sanctuary cities, the ultra blue cities throughout the country that were making life difficult for ICE, the immigration service, trying to get rid of illegal aliens. And they were making it easy, like in New York State, um, New York City and the state were giving illegal aliens driver's licenses, even though they can't legally get insurance, even though they can't legally work in New York State. Uh, in California, very similar things, where the information, whenever someone was captured and they were an illegal alien, they were not turned over to federal authorities for deportation, as is the law, but instead released those individuals back into the community, often with negative results for citizens in some cases, even having them murdered. So President Trump got fed up with that. And so he decided, hey, I know what the answer is going to be to that. I'm just going to defund those cities. They will get no federal funding. And if they get no federal funding uh, until they, or rather they would get no federal funding until they follow immigration law, turn over the illegal aliens so that they can be deported. And so the Various cities turned around, states turned around and said, we're going to sue. So in July of 2019, the case got in front of the courts and victory was made. Uh, the court said, and I want to get to a relevant point here, but you can, you'll see the links in the description here on YouTube and you can read this for yourself. But uh, the part I want to get into is the Justice Department uh, as it says here, the Justice Department had introduced conditions that impermissibly coerced grant applications to enforce federal immigration law, the city said. This is Los Angeles that said that. It also said that the immigration-related conditions were contrary to the goals for which Congress had provided the grant money to get more police officers on the beat, developing trust with the public. Now, th so the allegation is L.A. is saying, well, we need the money from the federal government so we can get people to trust us, to trust police officers, rather than to enforce the law. See, that's not really what police are there for. They're there to enforce the law. This is all going to make sense in just a moment. And But what judges reviewing this court case said is cooperation relating to enforcement of federal immigration law in, is in pursuit of the general welfare, you know, the number one reason why we have a government, to protect the people. That's the purpose of the government. Uh, it's number one purpose. Cooperation relating to enforcement of federal immigration law is in pursuit of the general welfare and meets the low bar of being germane to the federal interest in providing the funding to address crime and disorderly and disorder problems and otherwise, enhance public safety. That's what the judge said in that. Very interesting, right? That was in 2019. Now, part of the reaction from Democrats at that point, I want to show you what that is, uh, they didn't react to that very well. In fact, on February 4th, 2020, we got to see Nancy Pelosi throw a tantrum. I'm sure she had her hair done in the salon uh, that she recently had it done in. And her reaction was much like you would see today. She has a different set of rules. 
she can be able to do things no one else has ever done because, well, she's a Democrat. And she decided that destroying it was the thing to do. Okay, so that's what Nancy Pelosi did. Now, what does that matter? Well, you see, it doesn't end there. Also in February, right after Nancy Pelosi destroyed the speech of, at the, uh, so, uh, the State of the Union address, we saw that Connecticut also lost their sanctuary city funding fight. And that was also gone. Uh, again, they also believed we, can, we don't have to follow federal law, federal immigration law. We can allow illegal aliens into the nation against federal law, even though they're a state. They lost. Now, I say this because the cities that were involved in this, as we see in April 21st, well into the entire COVID-19 pandemic crisis, whatever you want to call it, um, many of these cities have been worried about this. Back in April of 2017, they were saying the cities that were targeted and this is where it gets interesting. Seattle, which would have lost $276 million. New York City, which would have lost $53.7 million. Chicago, which would have lost $3.6 billion. Philadelphia, that lose, would lose $26 million. And LA, which would lose $500 million. Now, why is this all important? Why am I bringing this up? Do you notice that the very same cities, almost identical, almost every single one, plus others, that are the largest centers for illegal immigration, the cities that are actively disavowing the law, are the very same ones that have BLM violence that is running rampant. We're talking about L.A., which is having riots and, and violence. We're talking about Seattle, which had the Chaz and is burning um, and has had massive problems and killed and BLM member supporters, killed children, a 19-year-old and a 16-year-old. We see that uh, Philadelphia has had massive problems. New York City has had a massive spike in shootings and murders. Because each of these cities have the same thing. They are not protecting and serving the public. They're not doing their number one primary job. What they're doing instead is they're promoting a political agenda. And these are the same people, like in California, as an example. Uh, I want to show you. Uh, in California, just this year, August 8th of 2020, California was enforcing its laws on its towns. And in a similar situation, a reversal here, a lower government is saying that the higher government has no power. Uh, according to the LA Times, there is the small Central Valley town, um, which is in, oh, I forget. Sorry. Um, the city town, they declared... Um, that they were a Atwater, excuse me, that's it. Atwater declared that they are a sanctuary city for business, that they weren't going to comply with the COVID-19 restrictions of Governor Newsom, that the public was okay and it would be fine. And they said, we will not comply with these shutdown orders and destroy our economy because that doesn't protect our people and our businesses which ultimately means the same thing, protecting their people. And so Atwater is shut off. Los Angeles, or rather California, said, okay, you're not going to get money. We're going to take away $387,428 that they would normally get to help protect that town, that town Atwater, and protect its people. Because they said, if you're not going to follow the rules, you don't get a federal, uh, excuse me, state benefit. But this is the same state under Governor Newsom that said, you know what? They don't care. They don't want to do what? 
the federal government says. They don't want to file the federal laws. So all of this winds up being chaos. It is a problem where we have the federal government saying, we want you to do something because you're not protecting the public. And because of the political agenda, certain governors in certain states are saying, no, and the law doesn't apply to us. But they are ab adamant and absolutely against anyone else not doing what they say. Kind of like with Governor Cuomo here in New York. You must follow his rules. You must. Otherwise, you're going to be penalized. But he doesn't have to listen to someone else. He doesn't have to follow the federal laws, like in this case, immigration. Now, what does that really mean to the average person? Well, this is what happened today. Uh, today, we see that President Trump has put forward orders, which have been worked on for a couple of weeks now, and he is ordering the, the government, the federal government, to review New York City, to review uh, Seattle, Washington, D.C., Portland, and several other cities to make sure that they are, in fact, following the law and they are protecting their people by stopping the violence of Black Lives Matters and stopping the violence that we see from Antifa and to gain control over their cities, to end the riots like in Seattle that have been going on for nearly 100, I believe it's day 96 today, almost 100 days, and to protect the businesses, the people in their cities. The number one thing that all businesses, all government, is meant to do. This is their job. And obviously, this is a problem for a lot of the cities. Um, you know, Governor Cuomo can't stand the idea. And he is livid that he would be forced to do his job, to protect the people, that, he, that de Blasio is being forced to protect the people, not their political beliefs, not their political ideology and their agenda with Black Lives Matter, with Antifa, with democratic socialism. No, they're being told, if you want the money, you have to protect the people. Stop the riots. Now, I don't know, a, a lot of people may have an issue with that. They may have questions about that and say, well, really, it's not that big a deal. He shouldn't take away their money. I mean, how bad could it be? Well, besides everything else that's gone on, remember that today, September 2nd, there is the Antifa commander, quote unquote, who got caught with a flamethrower. A flamethrower. This is an Antifa thug who is going to an Antifa uh, an event, a rally for BLM, and he was bringing along a flamethrower with him. By the way, if you didn't know, a flamethrower falls under Title I federal law, and it is illegal to have unless you have a very specific and very, very difficult to get license. You can legally have a flamethrower. You can legally have a tank. But you need a very specific license, which I believe about 3,000 people in America actually have. That's it. He isn't one of those 3,000. So he is carrying an illegal weapon of mass destruction. A flamethrower is a weapon of mass destruction. Um, matter of fact, when they first came out with them, they were almost outlawed by the Geneva Con Convention, as I recall. And he was going to do what in Wisconsin? He was in Green Bay. What do you think he was going to do with a flamethrower? I shudder to think of what he might have done, especially in the environment we're in right now, where we see people are being killed in Portland because they are wearing uh, apparel that says they support the police, that they support President Trump. Because of someone's appearance to look like they support a political ideology, there are members of BLM and Antifa that are willing to kill 
and this guy's bringing a flamethrower. And the reason why they're able to do that is, as mentioned by, oops, uh, as mentioned by, nope, wrong one, sorry. Uh, there it is. As mentioned by Kaylee McAnney, I know I got her name wrong, we see that news organizations like CNN have gone over 90 days and never once questioned the rioting and the violence that we see out there. We have people like um, Representative Nadler who's saying Antifa is a myth, even as we watch riots go on, as we see cities burn down, as we see people who've been, what about, um, what was her name, Jessica Dottie Whitaker in Indianapolis, who was killed for merely saying the words, all lives matters. We have an eight-year-old child in Atlanta that was killed because BLM was trying to take over a section of that city and the parents drove in the wrong place and they shot them. A BLM supporter shot their car, killed their eight-year-old because BLM wants power, because the mayors and the governors aren't protecting the public, because they are using things like the bail reform to allow people to go in and out of prison, uh, in and out of jails, to go around, to come right back out and to harm people. You may have seen the guy on uh, New York, in New York City, who tried to attempt to rape a woman during the daylight in front of everyone. He got arrested and then he got released a couple of hours later. He's running around in New York City right now. God knows what he's doing. Women, please be very careful and be aware. There's the shooter in Portland, Mr. 100% Antifa, who had previously been arrested at protests with Antifa, uh, with loaded firearms, who is up to no good, who's been arrested before, and he was released. We have this kid who just got arrested in Green Bay. And hopefully he's going to stay in jail. But guess what? He was already arrested previously for causing problems and having, uh, I forget what it was. I believe he was armed at the time and got arrested previously and then got released. This is the bail reform we're talking about there. We see the trend. And just like with the illegal immigration, it's the same cities it is the same political mentality that is causing this problem. And I think that the answer by President Trump to say that if you cannot protect the public, the number one purpose of government to protect the public, if you cannot do that, then you don't deserve to get the federal funds. And we already know that this has been put through the courts already under illegal immigration, so he can do this. Now imagine, right now, Governor Cuomo is begging for $59 billion for a bailout from the federal government, and New York City is about to lose another $53 billion, uh, excuse me, $53 million. L.A. is desperately in need of money. They're going to lose $500 million. Portland, Seattle, Minnesota, who are looking for $55 million, they probably won't get it either. Because in each of these cases, we have people like Mayor uh, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler, who is more willing to run away than to actually protect anyone. When the riots and the rioters came to Ted Wheeler's apartment complex and tried to set it on fire, endangering everyone in that apartment building, his answer was, I'm really sorry, I'm moving. Not, I'm going to protect you. Not, I'm going to stop these riots. I'm going to enforce the police, and, oh, excuse me, enforce the peace and have police arrest people. And we're not going to just immediately release them once they are arrested. We have cities like what happens in Kenosha where 102 people out of 175 that have been arrested aren't from that community. 
and yet they're being re-released to come back out and help cause more harm. In that environment, you have people like Governor Cuomo who are saying, well, you should do your job, President Trump. This is your fault. No, the president cannot go in and take over a state. He cannot go in and take over a city. That's called the Constitution. He's limited in his power. He can't do that to states or cities. But the governor can. The mayors can. And if they will not do that themselves, they need to be incentivized to do it. And since he can't bring in troops, he can deny money and reroute it to other cities and to other places that are trying to protect their people. Is that the smartest thing, though? Is that the right thing to do? Will this affect the election? Because we can imagine that you're going to hear Joe Biden, well, from his basement in a press release, probably not in person, he's going to say, well, that's an abuse of power. The president can't do that, even though we know he can. He's going to say that this is political, which it really isn't. It's political to allow people to be endangered by riots that do not end, by businesses being destroyed and people driven out of their homes out of fear and out of desperation. You know, like the people who are leaving New York State and New York City right now. People who are leaving Portland and Seattle, L.A., Austin, Atlanta. So you can't say that either. But we're going to hear Joe Biden say something of that nature, in a, most likely in a press release, not actually a press statement where he might be asked a question, which I doubt he will take. But is that enough for Democrats to go, that's too much? Or do you think instead the public, Democrat, Libertarian, Conservative, Republican, are going to say universally, yes, if the government isn't willing, if the figureheads, the leaders of our communities aren't willing to do their job, then the president should force them to do their job by whatever means he can. Not that he's taking power, but that he's forcing them to use their power the way it was supposed to be to protect the people. I think this is something that, while initially it may sound bad, I think once people realize and think about the fact that they are not being protected in these Democrat strongholds, when we see these blue of blue of blue cities and states that are ignoring the public and allowing lives to be endangered and now, as we've seen, killed, yeah, I think the public says, bully, bully, Mr. President, good for you, yes, Put pressure on them. Make them do their job. Support the police. Protect the people. I think this is going to be very powerful. I think it's going to be very important. But I wanted to share my thoughts on that because this isn't something new. We've seen this. This is the same argument. At the end of the day, it's the same argument as what we saw in 2017. Just like with illegal immigration. This is about politicians, elected officials, who are willing to put their personal political agenda ahead of the public. And because they do that, people's lives are in danger, both immediately from riots and random people, MBLM and Antifa, who are willing to kill someone just for the way that they appear or their political preference, yeah, They're, these leaders are willing to support that, but not protect the public. I think when people think about that, they will agree, and President Trump will go higher in the polls. That's what I believe. But what do you believe? I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you.